class. Hey everyone, how are you? Thank you for being here. Um, I'm in Brooklyn, New York, and I do recognize a lot of people's names coming in and hi, hi everyone. Um, but I don't know, I don't know how many of you are here through Derwent or Michaels and don't know me. Um, so in case you don't, I am an author and teacher and artist. Uh, I do a lot of things. I'm also a designer. Um, and I have a few books out. They're called uh, Draw Your Day and Draw Your World. And they're all about being inspired and drawing uh, the world around you and within. So, um, but mostly just sort of things that we see and experience and in, in our in our world. And one of those things right now, especially in my neighborhood in Brooklyn, um, is a lot of pumpkins. <laughs> They're everywhere and I love them. I love the color orange. Um, I'm really liking all the white pumpkins now and some of them have all different colors going on. Um, so, so yeah, that's what we're gonna um, paint today. And um, I have a few in front of me that I'll share and we'll go through the process. I also have a few gourds, some little ones that have um, some more color in them and just a little bit of a different shape. So I thought that would be fun to add one or two of those as well. Um, so, oh, great, yeah. People are saying they like my books. That's great. <laughs> um, they're uh, available uh, anywhere books are sold. You can order them um, or they're on Amazon. You just can search my name. Uh, okay, so if we can highlight my desk, Felicia. Give me just a quick second because like we said, these um, new Zoom changes. Oh, really? Has, okay. moved, has moved your overhead. So I'm like, okay. Where is it? Yeah, it did move it. You're right. Yes. <laughs> Everybody, please give me just a moment. Let's see if we can get this. Um, actually, uh, Sam, I think it turned off. I think your screen uh, may have turned off. Oh, no. It says it's meeting. Meeting is being recorded. Okay, let me. Really? Okay. Yeah, so sorry, everybody. Yeah, no, it's starting. No audio. Got it. <laughs> Do you see it now? Give me just a second here. Oh, my goodness. This is not, actually, it is no longer there. So I think it may have logged you out. Um, I think, I think it's there. Let's try this again. Give me one quick second. <clears throat> this has never happened before. Yeah, this is a new one for me too. I normally have no problem. All right, let me unplug it and see what's going on. And actually, Sam, I don't even see your name listed. Okay. If everyone just bear with us, we'll get this taken care of so we can get her yeah. in and get her started. I can definitely stay a few extra minutes. Molly can't, but I can. So, um... so Molly, no problem. Um, if there's any questions that come in after you have to leave, I will pass them over. Do you see it now? This is, has been really interesting today. Thank you all for bearing with us. It was it was there. Somebody yeah. saying that you can see me, but we're trying to get my desktop. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, yeah, your overhead that I am having a hard time locating. It's under Samantha. People are saying they see it. Is that right? We see, I see your front. Hold on, give me one second. Okay, here we go. Let's try that. There we go. Oh, oh good. 
Okay, can everyone see it now? Sorry about that. Let me just get it in the folder, so we're good. Okay, okay, I got nervous there. <laughs> All right, we're good. So I have some pumpkins that I've painted in the past. All with uh, my Derwent, let me just take this plug so I'm not shaking, sorry, one sec. I always get nervous that I'm gonna run out of battery. There we go, okay. Everything should be good now, okay. Whew, that was a little nerve wracking. Um, all with Derwent ink tense paints. Um, and when I'm, so I usually, I, I I'm a water, people think of me as a watercolor um, artist and that I use watercolors primarily, but probably about three, four years ago, I started using the Derwent ink tense paints and I just really love the depth I can get with them. And so I will be using them today. I don't, you don't you do not have to have them uh, in order to participate and follow along. Um, but yeah, there's just like, this one was painted a little bit more like watercolor, but I did use the ink tense paints. Um, so, and I'm not working in, I'm seeing somebody say no sound. Can you hear me? Everyone can hear me? Okay, okay, good. Sorry, I see one method and I get nervous now. <laughs> so, um, I am using right now a 4B pencil, and this is a, a Derwent pencil as well, but any pencil will do. And I'm gonna begin by sketching, but, um, and people usually wanna know what paper I'm using. I'm, I'm using um, for this class, the Derwent Ink Tense paper. I really like it with the paints. Um, it's a little bit more, uh, like cold press, a little more, has a little more texture than I usually use, but um, it's really nice if you're just looking for paper that, you know, sort of designed to use with these materials. But any watercolor paper will do. So I have some pumpkins and gourds. I'll show them to you. One that's a little bit bigger. I don't have really big ones here. I'm thinking maybe I could draw, paint one that is from imagination now that I've painted so many pumpkins, but see what happens as I go. So when I'm starting my planning my sketch, what I like to do initially is just very lightly draw, like barely, you can, can barely even see it. Very, very easy to erase, just an overall shape. You brought, you guys probably can't see anything I just did, but I, I can see it a little bit. Um, and then just start to add some details. And from my angle right now, the, the stem of the, largest pumpkin sort of is about um, about a quarter of the way down the height of the whole circle that I just made. So the lines will start to get darker and you'll be able to see them. But it's nice to just start with a little bit of a, um, a basic shape that you can work in so that you know, um, you know, where to build from and that you're not making things big. I could have, you know, drawn that circle three or four times until I got it the right size. So now with a pumpkin, all of these sort of lines come from the stem, these like sections or so, whatever, however you want to refer to them, of that make up some of the some pumpkins have like bigger bumps and ridges. Some of the larger pumpkins, there are more of them and they're sort of uh, closer together and they don't, they don't have as many, like they don't go in and out as much. But for this one, they kind of do. So all the lines come from the center 
point though, the stem. So if you can see, I'm just adding a little bit of weight and I'm just pulling from that stem and having the top line meet that bottom. So if I, if I want to, so that you guys can see it a little better, I can add a little bit of weight. Could I sketch a bit darker, please? Yes. So. My whole, one of the, one of my favorite things about when I'm drawing and that I try and tell my students and I talk about often is building. Not getting in there too dark and too heavy right at first with the paint or with my, with my um, pencil. Um, and sometimes I'll move the pencil around a lot more than this. I'm trying to be a little more decisive because I'm teaching. Um, but it's nice to go lightly and build. I do the same thing with the paints. So um, can everyone see my lines? See now, if I work lightly enough, I feel like I made my, my stem a little big. So I'm just shortening it. There we go. Now I'm gonna add another, another piece. And again, if I just um, go really lightly, I don't have to, um, I don't have to worry if, if I'm a little bit off, I can just erase. I'm having this one fall off the bottom of the page. Nice to have things come off the sides of the page. It creates a little more interest in your final piece. So I'm just getting a basic shape. It doesn't really look exactly like it, um, but where I have it sitting, I can see this little nub here. I'm not sure what it's called. And it's about there. Suddenly when you add something like that to a piece of food, you see the dimension, it becomes. So I'm not gonna add too much shading to this because we'll do that with paints and color. I'm gonna do one more small pumpkin. So this pumpkin is a little flatter. Again, I'm just doing one large kind of circle, and then I'll add details. The stem on this one is a little more centered from my angle, from the perspective of where I'm sitting. So it, I guess it's important to say I'm drawing for life right now. Um, you can draw from a photograph, you can draw from your memory, you can just follow along with me and have nothing in front of you. It's nice to draw from life if you can. You play around with really looking at what's in front of you. Okay, so that is my first sketch. And now I'm going to move on to paint. We'll also be using some ink tense pencils as well. 
see someone's asking about a supply list. It was in the original um, invite, and it's just ink tense paints and pencils. Um, the pencils are water soluble, and then a pencil and a, a fine line pen. So I'll be using this after I add a little bit of paint. Sometimes people do ink before. There's no um, exact order. You can work however you like to work yourself. But my lately, my preference is to add a work in paint, at least a light layer at first, and then add to ink. So I'm working with the ink chance paints. I'm using the lighter orange. It's called mango. And I'll probably be using bright orange and mango pretty much for the whole thing. I'm also using the flat brush. I like to use this first, so I don't get too tight at first. Um, it's the largest water brush. Now I'm just blocking in color. And it doesn't matter if my paint goes outside of the lines. It's my personal style um, to try and keep things a little bit loose. Now on this, I'm seeing a lot of highlights on this um, small pumpkin, it's a little shinier. So I'm gonna try and leave a little bit of those highlights in white right on the paper. The great thing about the ink tense paints is you can add white for highlights. It's not super opaque, but um, you can take some white gouache and work with that. I sometimes use this leak proof white ink. It's just, I might add that at the end if we have time and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm blocking in what I see in front of me and leaving a little bit of white for the highlights. Once I start to build and add, you'll see this really, the, the um, form, the shape come to life and become more three-dimensional. But you can see it's very light, it's very she sheer. Um, it's very like kind of washy like watercolor. It's only mango so far. I have not added anything else. Some of it is a little bit darker just because it's more opaque. And what I love about the ink tense paints my favorite thing about them, which makes them really unique, is that they you can build them, they dry flat, you can just keep adding layers. And some of my pieces have up to like 10 layers. So I'm adding a little bit of the same mango color, but a little bit, um, just building and making it a little bit darker um, to show like through the bumps, to show how they I 
always compare um, intense pains or say that they're a cross between um, watercolor and acrylic wash, which is a, a little bit of a weird combination, but they're they're kind of uh, watery like you can get a really thin wash and have play with them like watercolors and have like these really nice fluid washes. Um, and then you can also work with them and make them really, really opaque. Some of those highlights I'm going to fill in, but because I'm building on top, it's just going to get darker. I'm going to add a little bit of the same color mango to the board. Just blocking in some color, really, really loose. I'm also not erasing my pencil. You can see I'm going right over it. That's also just personal choice. Some people don't like that. You might want to you would want, would, would want to erase your pencil. I kind of like building on it. All right, now I'm gonna add a little bit of the darker orange mixed with mango and just go. Even darker. For the gourd, the bottom of the gourd, you see how there is a shine to it? I might have to go in with some white there, but we'll see. Um, I'm gonna be using the um, two greens on the bottom, a racing green and what's this called? I have my glasses on, but I can't read it. Ionian green, these two greens. Because we're on limited time, I'm not um, mixing, but these paints are great. You can mix them using pretty much using them right out of the right right out of the palette. But certainly can. can mix them. All right, now I'm going to go in with some with a finer paintbrush and get a little bit more details. This is in the set of Derwent brushes. There's two that are about the same to me. I use them sort of interchangeably. And then there's a really thin one, which I won't be using today. 
It looks almost the same. Molly can chime in if there's a difference or any reason to explain the brushes more. So similar to the pumpkin, this the board has is it's all coming from the stem in the bottom and the top. So it has these lines similar to a pumpkin and these ridges that I can start to define with, with color. It's dry enough, I'm gonna show how the colored pencils One is medium and one is large. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm using a uh, cadmium orange uh, out of my Intense pencil set. Um, and it's really nice to use these interchangeably, you know, sort of just, or in conjunction with each other. Um, because you can go in and get some more details, you can define lines, you can, uh, work with you know adding adding little details i can show you how that might happen using this one's called baked earth but i can start to fill the form with with the pencils a little bit more and as long as the paint is dry. And in our class, it's hard to let the paint dry between each stage completely, but um, I really like being able to have the pencils with me at the same time. And basically you're just sort of laying down more pigment that you can either add more water to or not. Molly, do the pencils um, have to be um, used with water? No, right? They do not, no, they do not. Sam, a couple of people are asking what pencil color you're using right now. This is Baked Earth. Um, I have a pretty large set, so I'm not sure how, you know, if this is in all of it, but it's, it's, it's like a, um, a, a little bit like a yellow ochre, maybe a little bit darker. So yeah, now the a great place to use the pencils is in like the stem, for example. Um, if I want to start to define that shape and add like the texture that's in the in the um, the stem, there's like little lines that kind of make up. I can show you. Hopefully it shows, you can see it on the screen. Like those little lines, it's kind of an interesting shape in and of itself. And it's really, it's, it's really easy to work on building that form with the, with the pencil. Right now I'm using leaf green. Hey Sam, when you give the colors, can you give the numbers too? And then someone was asking if you can put your paint palette to the left where you've got your water brushes and line makers just so they can see what color you're dipping into when you go oh. for your paint. 
we were trying to figure out how to be able to see your supplies without I know adjusting the camera view. Does that work? I think that works. Yeah. I'm, I can move because I'm only roughly looking at my reference. I'm not attached to how it was in front of me. So is that better? Yeah. Now what green color were you using again? Cause some people missed that leaf, leaf green. 1500 is the number. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, if I had a smaller set, it might, but I just don't know which ones are in, you know, this, the smaller sets. I'll look it up and put the numbers and the sets as you use them. Okay. So I'm going to use the same one here, leaf green. I'm going to keep it consistent. And I'm just working on adding this form. It, these stems are, are really fun to draw. If you, and if you really look at them, they have like this whole little sort of life of their own. Um, and they kind of have these like this shape that sort of has little um, points that point to where the these these um section start. So it's kind of it's kind of nice to connect them and work with them. Same here. See these they're like connected to you. Okay. Now I'm just going to define this little nub here at the bottom. I have not switched my pencil, just using the same. For me, it often it's about sort of getting some pigment down because I'm going to go into this with, with my brush and it will start to flow. I can show you what I mean. So I've got this down. Now, if I add water, it really, like the, the pigment that I've laid down like comes to life, it's, it's so nice. And I can just move it. Take some off. And suddenly, it's like a stem. Same thing here. I've defined like the shape. with where the lines are, but now once I move the um, pigment around with, with a little bit of water, and I can even take some of the pigment that's in there, definitely in this one, if I wanted to, and like pull it down, blend it, have it, um, you know, work, work in the rest of the piece. It does dry flat, so you have to work quickly. Yeah, watercolor pencils are super fun to work with. Um, they, we also have 
the intense blocks here, which I can just quickly show, these are like pastels. I did not have this on the tool list, so I don't want to confuse anyone, but they are basically like the same pigments, but you can get like a larger area. You can kind of get a little like looser and messier with it. So I won't use them too much because I did not have them on that list, but I just wanted to share. And so again, when I add water, I can just move that pigment around. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up from the bottom in a little bit um, of a darker color. I'm going to be using the bright orange, but um, right here, my palette's messy. I use it all the time, as you can tell. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of this um, brown. It's, it's called red oxide, just to make it a little bit darker, maybe even pull in some of this um, darker brown. So now I have this sort of darker, like orange maroony color that I can then pull from the bottom to show sort of where it's sitting on the table and how it how it gets darker on the bottom, and then also the sh shadows around these bumps. And as long as you work quickly, you can blend it pretty easily. Sam, you didn't use um, a, a Derwent block, did you? You just used the paints. Sorry, I was answering questions and someone asked. I did, I just showed really quickly. You just showed really quickly. Yeah. Okay. Just showed like, I have a small set here and it's this one. Um, and I just showed really quickly, like with an orange, um, the only orange in this set. So that's also part of the ink tents line. Do you mind showing the tin cover just so people know what it looks yeah. like? I don't want to confuse yeah. anyone. I was just, yeah. <laughs> I want to show people like that there are different ways of like sort of adding the pigment to your paper and then adding water and playing with the combination. It's really nice to play with all of it. Um, but yeah, I did not have the blocks on the original list. I just, um, it's just a difference of between like the way this goes down and the way this goes down. Um, I have a little test here. I can just show I was doing a test earlier. I like my version that I'm doing now better. Um, but, you know, just using it like that versus, you know, a finer tip. And this just gets a lot more down and you move it around than this. It's it's really the same. It's it's just a. Am I am I right to say that? I mean, it's it's maybe slightly different formulation, but it's pretty much. It is. It's a slightly different formulation, just because the shape and size, but um, has similar properties. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna work on this one now. I've kind of gotten that one to be, so as you can see, I didn't add any ink yet. I haven't added any um, real dark, dark. I, I can, because I, I really liked you, but I don't have to. Um, if, if people want me to keep building the paint, um, I'm very happy to just keep showing that.
So my brush is a little bit dirty from what I've done down there at the bottom of my palette, but I'm, I'm still just kind of using pigments in the same family. So I don't really mind. I'm just sort of like going back and forth. Once you get used to the paints and used to how they how they work, you know, you'll get more comfortable just like with the colors and how they um, interact with each other. And also just playing with the opacity. I don't mind talking through this at all if, if anyone has questions. So if I added a little too much like there, I just squeeze and get some more water. Um, hey, Sam, someone's asking about the push button water brush. Can you comment about how it works versus like other water brushes? Because I feel like the push button is what makes this one different and easier to control. Yes. It's all about the button. I mean, it's, it really, it really is. I mean, they, you squeeze them all. Um, do you see how just adding the dark is making those ridges really, it's like popping more. Um, so don't be, I'll go back to the brush in a second, but I just wanted to get that thought out. Um, don't be afraid to like build and build and build. It's the nice thing about these paints. Um, yeah, the button is really amazing. So you squeeze right here. You get really, I get, I've gotten so used to it. I use this, these brushes, I don't know, like 80% of the time. Um, even when I'm doing work for a book or for anything. I mean, I just, I've gotten really used to them and I just fill them up with water, the convenience is like, for me, it's just everything. I miss, sometimes I miss my my fancy brushes. <laughs> I really like them. Um, yeah, no, these, the, the I just saw um, just right up there on the, on in the chat, they, they have really good control and I've not used one that has been bad. Um, and I've used a bunch of them. Only thing like happens sometimes you just have to replace them. Like, I don't know if you can see here, but see the point just got, I don't even know what I did, but the point got a little flat there. But this you can tell is a really old one. You can't see, I completely rubbed off the the logo. Like I, I use them a lot. So they last a long time. Um, so I'm gonna um, let that dry a little bit and then I'll go back in with my with my um, ink and just gonna like take a little bit of the outside, those outside pencil lines off. I'm just using a plastic eraser. Derwent makes one. Um, I don't even know what this one is, but. plastic. The pencil that's under the paint will, doesn't erase as well, but it, the paint sort of like locks in the pencil, but I don't mind. the lift. I 
that's where I am so far. We only have about 10 more minutes, so I'm just going to work my hand. Sometimes the time goes by so fast. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more to my board because that one is. You see, once when I add um, more opaque paint, it really, you can get really, you can get really opaque is what I love, love about these. Sam, can you talk about if the colors lift when wet? People are asking if you can lift the color back off the way you can watercolor. So do you mind just kind of commenting on how ink tense works that way? Yeah, the, that's why I, I compared them to acrylic gouache. So the wash meaning you can get really opaque like wash, um, but uh, acrylic wash um, dries flat because of the acrylic kind of properties. They they gouache is um is opaque watercolor, but the the pigment can move around um, or get re re you can rewet it. Um, but these dry flat. Um, the, if you really work it work a lot of water on there like and really move it move around the pigment like you you can get it to move a little but it's really the whole the whole thing about them is that they dry flat and that's why you can build that's the the whole reason why um, you can build all these layers and just get a different quality than you can with watercolor hopefully I answered that okay Molly, if there's like a technical, anything you want to add, please do. So, yeah, they're not, they're not permanent, but they're, they're, they, they take, I mean, if you want, I can just do a quick experiment. You know, it moves a little, but really, I mean, that might also just because I had some colored pencil there. They really, they really don't. If I add some water to this area, it doesn't move. This was probably mostly the color pencil pigment that I had in there. It wasn't a very good thing to experiment with, but it can move maybe a little bit, but. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of ink just to define, this is how I work. I never outline anything like completely, completely. Um, I like to just add little lines to just give definition. Can you see that? Um, and it's nice to like work work with the. I don't have enough time to sort of give put these on a table and add shadow, but. Um, can also add like with ink on top of these, which it's it's nice to go like back and forth and back and forth with ink and paint. Um, I have like a kind of a fluid process that way. I can also add a little bit of cross hatching. Sometimes I'll just add a little bit.
Um, the one thing I do want to add right before I'm done, and then if anybody has questions, I'm here and I, um, I'm happy to answer any more questions, but um, it's just show how I might add some highlights. I know Molly, you have to go, so I'm happy to uh, finish this off. So you can kind of see the shine here from the white that I left behind, um, but I'm just going to show how I can add like a little bit of shine with the white. And so there's white here in the palette. Um, I'm just going to show with the Derwent paints. Um, mine's a little dirty, so I'm just going to clean it up a little. But you really want to work it in, like really get a pig the pigment on the brush. So I don't have too much water in there and it's a little bit more um, opaque. And then you can see, like, I could just add some shine right, right on top of paint. If I hey, Sam, Molly had to leave really quick, uh, had to leave, but could you speak on to what cross hatching is? Oh, sure. Sorry. Yeah. I just sort of took it for granted that people know. I in Draw Your World, I, I break it all down, um, my book, Draw Your World, but it is a technique with ink that uh, just by using um, lines that are, um, the size that I'm using, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you use what size works for you, but I'm using a 0 0.3 right now. The, you know, I, I also, you know, I kind of use whatever, but, this is an 08. I'll use an 08 for this example to show you. If you're doing like, say, a ball, and you want to show that it's, you know, where it's in shadow, you can just use parallel lines and then overlap them in various directions to get, to get it more um, opaque to show, so it's cross hatching is using um, parallel lines overlapping the distance between them will make them darker and um, how many times you overlap will make it darker as well. So all I'm doing is drawing parallel lines overlapping on top of each other. It's one technique to um, build dimension and shading with, um, with ink. There are a few others as well. So yeah, I think we're like almost at time. I mean, I could keep going, I could keep adding more, um, but as you can see, just building the layers, um, working with like adding, um, highlights, um, use, making uh, those ridges like really look like they're in shadow. It's like these bumps along the side. Um, they're much more like technical lessons on like how to break down the shapes and really see um, everything but uh, and draw it accurately. You can also just look at a pumpkin and draw it in a fun abstract kind of way and just see the shapes and do it in your own style. It does not have to look realistic like these do. Um, it's just one technique. Um, but I do love the intense paints and pigments in all forms. So I do recommend if you're interested. Sam, can you verify the type of paper that you're using? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so you can see like how opaque the white gets. I just want to show that it's really, it's really nice. So I'm using the Derwent ink tense paper. And I, you know, it was designed, it's watercolor paper. I mean, any watercolor paper you can use with the ink tense materials. So, but I just happened to use this because I'm working with Derwent and today and, you know, it's great paper. So it's thick and it has toothy. It's like a little bit more, um, more like cold press. And I usually tend to work on with hot press because I do a lot of writing and ink in my work. So I do tend to use hot press, but um, this one is cold press. And somebody's asking if it's cotton, it's 100% cotton, acid free. It's good paper, it's very good paper. Um, any any other questions? Uh, Felicia, if you want to switch over to folk, yeah, there. <laughs> um, yeah. There was one more question asking if you could repeat the ink tints, uh, paint colors, I think, as, and as well as the pencils that you use today. Um, yeah. You know, again, I, I don't like people getting too caught up in exact, exact, but in the 24 palette, hold it up here they're really just these two orange colors that I use for the for the orange of the pumpkin I use the white for the highlights and then I kind of went into some browns and I used some greens for the for the gourd um and then the the pencils I mean I have a handful here you know I would say experiment don't get too caught up in exact this I don't do um, for people who know me or don't know me, I'm not uh, big on doing like exact demos where people follow along and create exactly the same thing I do. Um, it's sort of, I want it to be inspirational. So um, I definitely used uh, cadmium orange, which is 0250. If anybody wants to type this down uh, in the chat, leaf green, Thank you is, um, I think somebody got it. Yeah, 1600. Um, Ionian green, I used 1320. And I think I used, there was one red oxide, but I used a brown or baked earth. That was a really nice one for the darks and the pumpkin. Um, and that's 1800. So these are in the like 72 set though. So I'm not trying to sell that to you. I think it's pretty expensive. Um, if you uh, get a smaller set, you can just use the earthy browns and the orange and yellows and reds and mix them all together and play around. So. And also, if you uh, really quick, there's a question asking, wanting to know whether or not uh, you could do this on a canvas. Oh, no, not with the ink tense paints. I don't think any, I've never actually tried, but um, you might be able to really play with like, there's new um, ink tense um, large blocks. There are these blocks and Molly's not here to answer this question, but they're these, but they're really big and they've just introduced them. So they um, they might be able, you might be able to experiment with like with them on, on canvas. I'm not sure though. I never paint on canvas, especially not with these materials. If I did, I would use acrylics personally. So um, yeah, so people know more, like there's a watercolor ground, somebody's saying, and then you can you can probably paint on top of that. Um, I'm not a pro with these, with campus. <laughs> not my specialty, um, but I love the idea of experimenting. So, you know, if you want, if you have some stuff laying around and you wanna just try and play around, uh, go for it, you know, see what happens. Could tell me. Um, 
Yeah. And so, so if anybody wants to find me, you can go to my website. I'll just plug it in really quickly. Um, all of my previous free Derwent classes are on the classes page. There were, there are some that are paid and they're not there, but they're, all the free ones are there. They're on the Michael's YouTube and you can just click and replay them. Um, I have a bunch of Skillshare classes and on my website also you can join my mailing list and I would love to see you um, on my Substack where I share everything and stories and all my classes and I'm writing a new book. So I'll share some bits about that um, through email. So definitely sign up for my email. Um, it's the best way to keep in touch with me. And yeah, and on my Instagram, everything's linked on my website though. So is there anything else? Any other last questions? I think that's it. Okay. You can always reach out to me. And please, if you painted some pumpkins, please share um, on Instagram. You can tag me as Dion Baker Design. Um, and I'd love to see what you've done. Thanks, everyone.